Dames en heren, mesdames en messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends. J'ai le plaisir de vous souhaiter la bienvenue ce soir à Beaux-Arts pour cette conférence d'Adrien Rusure, conférence inaugurale de l'exposition monographique intitulée « Performance and Performativity », retraçant les onze dernières années de projet du bureau d'architecture Baukunst. Il s'agit d'un travail de longue haleine, une préparation de plus ou moins trois ans que l'on a mené en collaboration avec notre partenaire culturel A Plus Architecture in Belgium. Un aantal jaar geleden hebben we samen met A Plus beslist om ons gezamenlijk programma te intensifiëren en een vervolg te breien te geven aan de belangrijke reeks monografische tentoonstellingen die we sinds 2008 samen organiseren in het Paleis voor Schone Kunsten, zoals de tentoonstelling over het werk van Robrecht en Dame architecten, of Iskerse Geers David van Sever of 51N4E. Dit resulteerde in de lente van dit jaar in een nieuwe reeks, een nieuwe serie monografische tentoonstellingen gewijd aan jongere uh, architectenbureaus in België. En de spits werd afgebeten door uh, Dierendong Blanke architecten met hun tentoonstelling Praxis. The office whose work we are presenting today, Baukunst, has a completely other profile than Dierendong Blanke architecten. Not the architects of the everyday, but rather a very sophisticated approach, even for everyday assignments. By beginning with these two offices, we really wanted to open as broadly as possible the scope of offices that will follow the next few years in this new monographic series. And the contrast couldn't be uh, bigger between the two. Dierendong Blanke has a very large production and, and works with ordinary materials and assignments. Baukunst is a research and design studio with only few projects that were actually built, but many others to come in the next few years. At Bozar and A+, we have a long shared history with uh, Baukunst. In 2009, we produced the exhibition installation Three Cities, with three large photographic images of Brussels, Bruges, and Liège, one of which is today back on show in the exhibition that we will visit later on. Baukunst has also been assigned uh, for, has also signed for the scenography of several Europalia exhibitions here in the Center for Fine Arts at Bozar. Last element before I give the floor to Lisa de Visser from A+. With these monographic shows, uh, we also have the ambition at Bozar to promote local Brussels and Belgian architects abroad. All the monographic architecture shows that we produced up till to now uh, were also shown elsewhere in Europe and in the world. Robert and Dame and Office went to Arcon Rêve and uh, in Bordeaux, uh, and uh, Office and 51 and 4 e went to the AA Gallery in London. Part of uh, the exhibition of Dierendong Blanke uh, went, uh, is actually on show as part of the 12th Architecture Biennial of Sao Paulo. Of course, we hope that uh, this show that we open here tonight will also have a long travel abroad. Thank you, and I give the floor to Lisa de Visser. Thank you very much, Iwan. Bonsoir à tous. Merci beaucoup d'être là si nombreux. Donc ce soir, nous avons le plaisir de vous présenter le travail du bureau Baukunst. Et donc c'est un bureau qui nous a fascinés depuis un, un long moment euh, pour plusieurs raisons. Non seulement par sa production, mais surtout par sa vision sur l'architecture et son attitude par rapport à la construction et sa méthode de travail qui est ancrée dans la collaboration interdisciplinaire. Deze bouwkunst werkt in een netwerk van samenwerkingsverbanden en breekt zo buiten de traditionele grenzen van de architectuur en bereikt een spectrum dat heel breed is en dat gaat over hedendaagse kunst, film, literatuur, technologie of positieve wetenschappen. Al deze elementen zijn verweven in de twee zaken die wij vanavond willen voorstellen, namelijk de tentoonstelling, maar ook de publicatie. 
Um, er zijn zeer sterk voelbaar in verschillende thema's die aan bod komen. Par exemple, il y a la notion de l'invisible et comment rendre visible l'invisible. Um, C'est une, une notion qui, um, qui revient à la fois dans l'exposition, mais aussi dans la publication, de montrer la face cachée de la technologie et les mécanismes derrière l'ordinaire. Une autre thématique qui revient ce soir, c'est la question du champ de tension entre la fiction et la réalité. Mais avant de rentrer dans les détails de l'exposition, je voudrais vous parler aussi un peu de la publication. De publicatie die wij vanavond uh, ook aan jullie willen voorstellen, is een uh, samenwerking niet alleen met Bozaar, maar ook met uh, Koenig Books uit Keulen. C'est une, euh, une publication qui a été mise en page par euh, les graphistes Olivier Lamy et Olivier Bertrand. Et ils ont l'habitude, normalement, de faire des livres d'art. Et ça se voit. C'est devenu un livre d'art au-delà de, des frontières et des limites de l'architecture. Voilà. C'est une monographie qui est réalisée par différents délits. Eerst krijg je een reeks euh, luchtbeelden. Daarna krijg je een reeks prachtige beelden van gebouwen en daarna krijg je plannen. Het lijkt een hele recht toe, recht aan uh, publicatie met een hele duidelijke communicatie over het werk van bouwkunst. Maar niets is minder waar. Alles is eigenlijk anders dan het lijkt. En daar wil ik ook weer refereren naar wat ik daarnet vermelde, het spanningsveld tussen fictie en realiteit. In de publicatie is het heel frappant hoe je verschillende prachtige beelden ziet van gebouwen die, als je beter kijkt, helemaal niet gebouwd zijn. En die dunne grens tussen fictie en realiteit vind je ook terug in de tentoonstelling. De publicatie is overigens pas verschenen en ook te koop vanavond in de bookshop. Voor ik het woord geef aan uh, Roxanne Legrel, die uh, meer zal vertellen over de tentoonstelling, zou ik wel graag nog een aantal mensen en organisaties willen bedanken. Eerst en vooral Bozaar voor deze jarenlange en steeds terugkerende samenwerking. Dank je wel. Verder uiteraard Adriaan Verschuren en het hele team van uh, Bouwkunst voor deze hele intense en uh, zeer interessante manier van werken. Um, verder zou ik ook de, de uitgeverij Keunig Boeks in Keulen willen bedanken voor de samenwerking voor de publicatie. En uiteraard onze subsidiegevers. La Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles, de Vlaamse overheid en La Région Wallonne. Ensuite, je voudrais bien remercier nos sponsors... Uh, Bureau Bouwtechniek, Delta Light, Le Grand Beccino, Knauf, Nico, Kone, Arco, Modena Archicat, Schermnet, Ludwig Svensen en Pianus Mane. En tot slot zou ik ook heel graag het team van Aplus willen bedanken. Zonder jullie zou dit er allemaal niet gekomen zijn. Een très grand merci à l'équipe d'Aplus uh, et spécialement à Roxane Legrel. Et Lara Molino pour le suivi de cette exposition et la publication. Merci. So, uh, good evening. Um, I'm very happy to be here. It's uh, an important moment for the office, and it's important that we are enabled to to share it uh, together. Um, I would like first, of course, to thank uh, my team, um, especially the team who work on the exhibition. I think it was quite intense the last few days. I would like also to thank our uh, clients, without whom uh, nothing happened, uh, really. And also to thank uh, all the uh, institution that works for architecture in Belgium, namely uh, the Baumeisters, uh, the Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles uh, Cellular Architecture that kind of supports uh, architecture through uh, the debate and also through uh, the dialogue competition uh, we participate. Um, tonight I will um, try to explain the, exhi the exhibition through the different issues that you will uh, discover later. Um, the idea is uh, of the exhibition would be to, as all the project we do, uh, we consider this moment as a research moment. Um, so I would like to go through those different topics that speaks about what we're doing, 
or what we think we are doing, uh, us uh, in, at Barclays office, but I guess in more general terms, also what somehow, how do we consider to do architecture uh, now? So it should work. Yes. Uh, maybe we can switch out down the line there. I don't know if it's possible. Um, so I can see you. Um, the, maybe one of the first uh, issue is um, to consider or to kind of uh, remember that architecture essentially is a language. Um, a language is basically built out of signs. Uh, and this issue is also very important to understand that science behind the science create meanings. Um, this is an issue we discovered by doing our first project here in Brussels. So you see here uh, the site. Um, we were invited actually to think about a space that is uh, this space here that was not meant to be public, but the brief asked to kind of bring uh, publicness into uh, the urban block that you see uh, here. So this is basically uh, the site just before the construction. Um, what we wanted to do uh, is to transform the status of this space. And by meaning transforming the, st the status is kind of a very important uh, element in what we think we're doing architecture. So we use the tool of architecture, which is somehow a simple structure uh, to transform the site, which was previously a leftover site, into a public site. And we use the tool of architecture to address this public uh, status. The project is, of course, also um, about a canopy, a shelter that we that is uh, making available for both uh, the community around uh, the, the site and also the school next to the project. It is a very simple shape, as you see here in the plan, a square. There is very simple elements that somehow establish a stable moment in this chaotic uh, inside urban lot uh, context. And of course, uh, this kind of a first exercise was also uh, to understand uh, how to play with very primitive elements of architecture, like the columns and the roof, but also the oculus that you find on the roof that brings light, um, water, and that allows also plants to uh, grow. This the idea of uh, sign is also somehow a way to understand a possible dialogue between uh, architecture and city. And that was actually a, more or less at the same moment a study we did through images. Uh, how can we basically bring another understanding of the cities by working by the absurd somehow, by here, like taking out all the landmark building that could act as sign. Another issue I would like to talk tonight is, uh, we called it the architecture as a theater for life. Architecture as a potential of staging things. That was possibly also a way we understood uh, SPA, the project, second built project, uh, here uh, in Belgium. The potential capacity of a building to stage people, but life in more uh, general terms. So the project was, again, a competition organized by uh, Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles. It was about the redefinition of an entire uh, lot and an entire site, as you can see here, it's around 24 hectares. But it was also about implementing new program. 
So we worked uh, together with Bureau Basmet uh, for the landscape uh, part of the design. And we produced few drawings, among other, this one, which is probably the key entrance for the project, or at least the way we understood the site, which as you see here, it's a topographical uh, map showing one of the character of the site, which is its topography and uh, the different plateau that somehow structure uh, the space. So you see here again, uh, one of the main protagonists of the site, which is a very clear contrast between sport facilities Jeez. and, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and nature. So um, the building somehow acts uh, as a stage, uh, staging element uh, towards the beauty of the site and also towards the activities around uh, the building. So the topographical uh, issue was clearly one of the main issues we start by doing this building, to play the, with the different of levels to create moments where again, building could act as a frame of, uh, of life. And the building is also, of course, in this very simple shape, a way to reveal the landscape and the topography around, around it. Another thing we wanted to also to address with this building is the continuity with the castle. As you saw previously in the picture, we had a very important uh, element on the site, which is this old castle. And we wanted actually to uh, rebuild the circle, or at least to build in the continuity of the circle to make a continuity between the old castle and the new uh, addition. So you see here a section showing the physical continuity of both uh, building. Another element that is also important to understand perhaps the, the project is the roof. Um, the roof is actually a bit following the same strategy as uh, Bureau Basmet uh, regarding the landscape. So you see, you see here two different schemes showing on the left side uh, uh, the existing forest with different densities. And then the, on the right side, the proposal of Bas that is playing with the contrast between the natural and the artificial um, um, elements. So um, Bas proposed actually to plant a grid of trees to assign uh, some space, some public space like the esplanade, the parking uh, space, and to again kind of create a dialogue in contrast with the nature. I guess the roof plays a bit this role somehow. Um, with the environment. So you see here a plan. I'm not gonna go too much into detail regarding the, the program, but you have to imagine that you have a collection of program that was meant to be scattered around the site. We decide to basically place this program all under the same roof in continuity with the basement of the, the castle that you find here. And perhaps what is important to notice in this plan is the big, uh, over the big space that are somehow outside but covered uh, by the, the structure. So you see here one of these space. For us, it was very important to create a certain porosity between, again, the natural environment, environment and the, the, the building. I guess another issue, as you saw, the building is organized around the patio. Uh, the patio plays obviously a symbolic role of uh, gathering people around the patio, but possibly also address another scale, which is the scale of the valley and perhaps also a dialogue with the sky. A third uh, issue uh, would be about somehow more about the process. How do we, how do we work somehow? 
you see here, uh, we called it uh, architecture as an art of composition that refer to an image of history of, mov of movie uh, by Jean-Luc Godard. Um, we believe as architects, perhaps uh, the idea of composition would be much more focusing on the relationship of things between things, much more on the things for themselves. And this is actually a quote that follow us for quite a long time now. This is a quote again from a uh, cinematographer, uh, director, Robert Bresson, that says that perhaps creating or inventing people or things uh, would be about creating links or relationship between things and perhaps also the way they already exist. So I guess this is how we work somehow, and this is perhaps also how we see the work, um, by much more working at the an assemblage or a composition, one could say also in a more classical way, proportion, building proportions. Uh, that project could perhaps speak about this issue. Uh, it is a small project uh, we are hoping to build next year here in Belgium in the Pays des Collines, near At. So it's a small community center uh, for a village. And as you see in this image, it's basically built up of almost uh, as found objects, almost uh, objects that you could find uh, themselves for perhaps another use also. So you have a big beam here, which is a precast beam, but it's actually a beam for uh, bridges, columns, curtain walls, uh, also the water tank, the, the vellum. So the building is located, uh, as I said, in a small village called Tongre Notre Dame. One of the main figures, somehow, one of the main element is the Cardinal uh, Blaton. So we decide to implement the building quite logically following this, uh, this, uh, this line here that allows us also to create quite easily a different space. Uh, this space, the foreground of the building would be kept, would be kept uh, as a humid uh, uh, landscape. And then we have two other space here and here. We have one which is more the parvis of the building and the other one, the um, playgrounds. So if we go uh, inside the building, it's very simple as you saw previously in the, the image. So it's an enfilade uh, space. You have outside space, and then you have a first uh, polyvalent banquet room, then you have facilities, uh, restrooms, kitchen, another bigger room, and a terrace uh, here. The structure, uh, as we also saw previously, it's a composition of six beams, few columns, and uh, infillings uh, facade. So the structure is an important element in this project and perhaps in all our project also that define the space and possibly also define a supporting element for all the technical uh, facilities of the building, which is the cooling and heating system. Another issue um, would be um, how do we work with time and how do we work with history? I guess time and history in our work is very important. Uh, what we want to address through this slide is basically uh, that we don't consider ourselves as inventor, but we like to consider ourselves much more as interpreter, and perhaps also in a kind of a musical sense or musical understanding. Um, this is a quote, perhaps also addressing this issue. Uh, intelligence is nothing but the choice between memories. I guess as architects, we are engaging memories to do, to do projects. And on the right side, you see one of the first projects we did at the office, at the beginning of the office, which was at the beginning, it was kind of a small joke to put plants, thousand plants next to each other and to create a moving history. I guess we have a kind of a 
a relationship to history which is not a nostalgic way, but we see history of forms and ID as an incredible potential to play with uh, as an architect. And as Jean-Luc Godard says, perhaps what was classical, what was modern, some, some, sorry, what was modern at a certain time would be classical, and what is modern could be at a certain point also classical. So we don't see history as a linear, somehow something very linear uh, way of doing things. Another um, perhaps understanding of architecture would be uh, to consider just for a while uh, architecture as device. Device for us means that perhaps architecture could be driven uh, towards uh, another goal than the specific goal of uh, responding to a program or responding to a site. Um, and perhaps to illustrate this idea, uh, I would like to speak briefly about another competition uh, we lost, since we lost quite a lot of competition, but this one was quite important. It's, uh, about, it is about a traveling theater um, that was again organized by uh, Fédération Wallonie Bruxelles. Um, driving theater for a street art uh, a company. Um, what we basically propose is to have uh, to produce a device, what we call our dispositif in, in French. Uh, so to see architecture much more from that perspective, a device that enable to have great or a very important interaction with the street since the stage is directly uh, linked uh, to the to the to the stage and uh, sorry to the background and to the to the city. Uh, what we so you see here the plan um, and few images showing this idea that perhaps architecture could also be only about uh, placing uh, things in a certain context and offering a maximum also interface as here with the public space. So you see here different configuration of the theater. Of course, it could uh, lift up and down to have different kind of a stage for different performance. And ultimately, considering uh, architecture as device, uh, bring, uh, of course, the question of the technique uh, so we use the book of your concept to address differently the technique, technique as space. For us, technique is not a goal in itself, but what we wanted to address through this, uh, this issue is maybe there is a way now to engage technique uh, as a creation of space. Uh, as we all know, buildings are more and more technical, at least for certain program. Instead of putting techniques aside of the building, we want to kind of understand if it would be possible to, to generate uh, also space from the technical aspect. This is clearly an issue um, we are working on uh, for projects uh, of uh, here in Belgium in, for Frame. So the building is right here. Um, perhaps a few words about the context. So if you uh, know a bit the situation, this is Boulevard Riers, uh, and this is one of the main entrance and exits to the east uh, side of uh, Brussels. Uh, it is actually, the building is part of a bigger uh, plan. Uh, it's the Media Park plan. Um, so the old television center uh, he will be uh, destroyed, replaced by the two headquarters of the new television. And the building will be actually um, hosting different kind of institution um, for media, um, namely the Bx one which is the regional television, but also Screen Brussels, Media Arte, which are all dedicated to uh, media, television and uh, cinema. 
So this is a scheme showing the importance of technique in this space. Um, what we wanted to do is to, again, to be able to take this material and transform it into uh, somehow not only technical aspect, but also potentially urban or architectural uh, aspect. So you see here, this is a main floor plan, typical floor plan. Um, what is, of course, very important for us, at least in this kind of building, since the, the program moves uh, quite a lot and we actually experience it during the studies, um, to have a maximum freedom, actually, to create a free space. So this is a, a plateau of around 60 by 15 meters that is completely free from uh, all kind of technical or structural um, impact somehow. So we decide basically to put all the facilities, the technical facilities around the building and then to set it up in a way that it could create a dialogue with the city. So you see here an image uh, showing the building, uh, the main the boulevard that we saw previously at the aerial view and the way we decide to position the structure and the technical part is actually, of course, influencing the identity of the building, but perhaps also trying to address the different hierarchies uh, between the different sides of uh, the building. So you see here an image uh, from the highway that we saw also. And of course, as I said previously, like this building will um, accept very, very different forms of organization. So we saw there like a kind of a co-working uh, uh, space, but also more classical somehow uh, working space with inside here you have all the montage studio uh, and then offices and also a level which would be dedicated for the, the studio themselves. <coughs> Technique and space is probably also another issue. We work on, on another uh, building competition in Switzerland. You see here the, the, the site was again about a new layout <coughs> of this site, kind of existing campus with three existing building and we were assigned somehow to work within this gabarit here. You see here a um, more general uh, view. What is important to somehow understand is of course the very important uh, landscape element that are those small hills that structure the landscape but also so the site is here, but also the river that goes along the, the site. So we work together with uh, Catherine Mosbach, the landscape architect, and we decided actually, we were quite intrigued by the, these maps that are showing flood risk area. And we decided since the river was here, and, and actually the river was uh, somehow limited by walls, to kind of take out the walls to be able to float uh, the new park, the new site, and to create some kind of natural uh, landscape through this very somehow natural way of playing with the water. So you see here the proposal of uh, Katrin Mosbach, um, the, let's say, the river that could go into the site at certain period of the time of, of the, the year and these pictures show actually how we can also imagine during dry season to uh, walk around the site through this uh, stone, a river of stone. This is the plan showing the different buildings. And the building, uh, of course, wants to create a very clear and very open interaction with the surrounding landscape. So the ground floor is completely uh, openable. Uh, 
this is a schematic floor plan uh, showing also the way uh, we work with again this idea of uh, versatility or changing of program it's a research and teaching building so it changed also a lot between labs classrooms uh, office space so you see because of the gabari sorry uh, we had to respect it's kind of a fat building. We divided it actually in three different uh, space or so three different layers. You have on two sides the plateau on the central uh, part, uh, natrium. See here more precise plan showing also the way we circulate uh, into the building. So the central space was both for circulation, but was also uh, hosting uh, one of the main atelier of the, the school. And this is the last, the top floor. Um, as you see, very technical, um, where we decide to put all the ventilation, heating system, in order to create kind of a technical landscape that was uh, also a requirement of the program to be able to access this space, to be able to teach and learn how uh, this machine works. And technical, technique versus space is probably also a way to understand a third project we're doing in Lausanne. It's again a project uh, situated in a campus, as you see here. The project is about uh, microbiology and neuroscience uh, teaching and researching program. And you see here more an abstract uh, kind of implementation plan. Uh, what is important perhaps to understand in this plan is that we located the building just at the middle of two different kind of way of doing uh, campus. Uh, the one on the, on the right side, which is kind of a classical way with freestanding objects sitting on the countryside. And then on the left side, uh, a much more metabolistic kind of uh, or tree-like building, which develops much more like a kind of a system uh, horizontally. So we decide to, to place the building um, actually uh, to leave a freedom, to leave a void in between those two structures, to articulate the two different urban structures by this void and to place the building, as you see here, uh, a bit in, in the middle of the, the field. The, we realize also that the building is perhaps also part of another family. I talked about the horizontal way of, of, of organizing the, the campus on the left side and the more object-like uh, campus on the right side. Uh, the, the object would possibly also dialogue with more recent development in the campus, uh, building of Sejima uh, Learning Center that you probably know, or also RTS of office, but also you have here student housing or Congress Center that creates bigger objects, uh, some, some objects that are somehow bigger than a piece of architecture. So you see here uh, one of the plan. Uh, because of its bigness, also we had to find a way to structure or to organize the space inside uh, the building. As you see here, uh, this kind of building are very uh, technical. So uh, we put, we place actually all the blinded uh, rooms at the center that they need a lot of technical uh, requirements uh, that don't, doesn't, doesn't need light and that are quite sensitive also in the, for the research. And then uh, on the other, other layer, you have all the labs, uh, offices and space that would need lights. And then you see here perhaps one of the main elements of the project which is a big gallery yeah, surrounding the, the building and, and able to make uh, direct access through uh, the different staircase here to deliver some whole, all the plateau uh, in the same, same way. So you see here uh, possible layout of uh, the project with a bone somehow that is uh, organizing the internal circulation 
and the section. Um, I think this space, again, if we talk about the technique and the space, this space was potentially the most important space in the building. As you see, it's, it's located in between inside and outside. Um, and beside creating informal moments for student and, te and teacher, but also researcher to meet, it, we also try to engage this space in the climatic way the building uh, could work. So you see here one image of this space. And here two schemes that shows two different configuration. The one on the left side, which would be more during winter, where we take profit of thermical deposition to eat partially the space and windows, everything is somehow closed. And uh, this space, uh, sorry, this uh, scheme here show, um, let's say the summer or summer condition or when it's yeah more uh, warm somehow, where we basically use um, natural ventilation so through the small openings uh, at the facade level that you see here, but also through uh, bigger uh, windows um, that, yeah, again, uh, over ventilates the whole, the whole building. So you see here kind of a detailed section. I think one of the goal was also to create different landscape regarding the, the position uh, the orientation of those space, you see that it's divided in three deep duplex somehow. So we imagine different plantation, um, different way to use also the gallery. And I guess this is an outside image showing uh, also the scale of the project. Uh, we wanted through uh, these big openings, possibly also uh, addressing a bigger scale, uh, which is perhaps the scale of the lake and the scale also of uh, the mountain. Um, another issue would be to consider architecture in its ability to create probability somehow. Um, we, as we already saw in few projects, we are very much into projects that tries to leave a maximum freedom of use. And I guess that was, uh, that is also clearly an issue of some of other projects uh, we are developing or we, we developed. Uh, perhaps one, one of those would be uh, our proposal for the Forum Zurich a competition we did um, uh, two years ago. Um, here again, the program was to develop a maximum surface. Uh, you see the site and the building uh, here. The program was very dense for the site. Um, and we had to find a strategy somehow both to offer maximum surface, maximum program for, uh, for the, the following the brief but um, also to find a way to address what they call the forum. The forum is, would be a space where people would meet inside the building. So the building is basically composed of uh, different programs, very various programs. So it's a learning, teaching center. You have a bit of everything. You also have sport facilities. But perhaps to come back to the, to the situation, what was also important in the designing of this building is to understand a bit the structure of the urban uh, context. So you see here, this is one of the uh, 19th century uh, historical boulevard, uh, where you have next to this boulevard, uh, the, the main institutions for the, the university, you also have the, the library. Uh, that was clearly one of the, the, the issues. How do you, again, address this idea of forum regarding the existing very classical uh, palazzo uh, surrounding the, the boulevard. Uh, here is an, an, an image also showing the situation where you kind of uh, understand or guess this kind of very classical architecture. But perhaps what interests us more in this project is not too much the buildings 
but it's more the trees actually. Uh, it is a fantastic landscape of historical and less historical trees. And we wanted actually to also to play with this uh, very important, very strong element. So you see here uh, a plan showing uh, somehow not the buildings, but all the surroundings. So in order to address this density, um, we wanted to, to engage the size, the entire size of the site to, be, to make a building as low as possible and to somehow build the building out of different slabs that, the, that draw different contour, as you see here. This is basically a plan showing the overlapping slabs uh, with all the circulation and at the middle you also have like an auditorium. Um, so that was somehow one of the image of the building. It's a kind of a stacking of different slabs, creating also uh, a lot of uh, space that are like balconies, um, giving a view towards uh, the city, but also interacting between the different level. Um, I guess this, uh, this proposal was also uh, to try to find a certain efficiency in the way light natural light would come into the building. So this is a kind of a lighting scheme showing that by overlapping the different slab, you could easily also uh, fulfill the lighting or the natural lighting condition. So here we see, again, few plants that shows also one another uh, topic, which is basically how do we make the the envelope, the thermical envelope, and how this envelope change uh, following the different levels and again create large open space uh, that we actually decide to be somehow part of the forum or part of the question of the forum. Oh, we have sound. <laughs> Um, I guess this idea of uh, making a very simple structure, kind of a simple and clear structure, is also uh, one of the issues of our building what we do with Bruder at the moment. It's uh, under construction, as you can hear. Um, it's in Paris, and it's a kind of a hybrid building, uh, overlapping um, public ground floor, uh, two level of uh, car parking and uh, student residence inside a very simple and capable uh, structure. So the two level of parking would actually be converted in future times into uh, housing. So it was also a way to engage the possible transformation of this structure and to already think about this transformation way ahead before uh, it happened. Sorry for the sound. And I guess uh, this issue was possibly also uh, one issue of our project for manufacture. Uh, so this is a project we won this summer. It is a project located here in Brussels at the abattoir site. Um, and it's again not the same question, but the, the one of the questions would be actually the hybridity of program uh, versus a very simple way of building a surface. So you see here at the ground floor, you have uh, the, the atelier, um, then you have like two level of uh, parking and then the public uh, facility, uh, uh, public function on top. You see perhaps it's better here with the section. Um, so it's a, again, kind of a three, three du duplex space one double height here for all the workshop, uh, then the two level of car park, park. this one would be uh, uh, taking out to be able to create another level of uh, uh, workshop also there. And then the last level that we conceived as a pergola that enables to have public activities. This is a view on top, so the project would be to make a public swimming pool on top of the of this big structure. The idea is to use the building as a big 
cooling and heating ex exchanger to use somehow the cooling system of the atelier that we, was located at the bottom to eat also the uh, swimming pool here. And I guess uh, this idea of versatility of program or uncertainty or not knowing somehow um, what would happen is probably also one issue of our competition we are doing at the moment. So I'm not going to show you too much <laughs> what we will propose, but uh, it's a competition we were invited to rethink here in La Défense. Uh, it's about, so you see here the Esplanade of La Défense. Uh, and we were invited to rethink the underground part of uh, this space. Um, as you probably know, this space is, uh, uh, all the surrounding space seems to be very crowded at the moment, so they are now looking at new surface to, to activate. So this is just to show a bit the complexity of the underground. They called it volume residuel. Uh, so the, we have to find a way to make a project with all that kind of uh, circumstances, uh, which are basically mainly infrastructural um, roads, uh, uh, paths, and technical also uh, shafts. So this is just to give you a view of the current uh, state. They call it uh, cathedral. Um, perhaps another thing that you could also find in the exhibition, since uh, the title kind of resonates also with this idea, would be to consider possibly architecture as performative objects, objects that are unable to literally perform actions. And that goes back again to this idea that perhaps could go beyond the idea of uh, human use and could also perform actions towards uh, other um, other goals. Um, um, just to explain, this try is uh, invited competition uh, in Geneva, uh, where the brief asked us to redesign the public space that you find here. So as you see in this picture, uh, you see clearly in Geneva, it's a very nice city actually to understand how a city builds. So it's a clear structure of a medieval uh, city and then you have classical city that is developing here with a museum a park. And in between those two kind of urban uh, texture, urban text, uh, structure, sorry, you have the bastion, a bastion which is the, the old uh, wall. Um, and the brief asked to kind of reconsider this space um, understanding also that in this space you had like old vestiges, which are the memory of the of the city that you see uh, here. So we were somehow facing kind of a contradiction. Sorry for the the poor quality of this image. Uh, contradiction between uh, giving a kind of a free space opened to the wonderful landscape of the lake and the Alps, and on the other hand, we were also asked to protect from direct light uh, this old vestige. So we propose to use um, an object that could somehow respond to this uh, requirement, which is a big parabola, kind of a big parasol, that could drop shadows on the vestige and move uh, following the uh, sunlight. Um, so you see here, basically, um, the memories of the of the city, uh, that, but uh, this object could also, of course, leave the space open and leave the view open as a public space. Um, that object could possibly also uh, uh, being a source of energy to um, fulfill the, um, the different constraints we had to, to fulfill for this space, which is like control the, controlling sorry, the hygrometry and temperature of this space. And ultimately, this object somehow acts as an urban uh, event. To go on and perhaps to give a kind of an open conclusion of this uh, talk, uh, and to go on with this idea of performative objects, I guess as architect, 
we have these incredible uh, opportunities to build conversations. And this is how we see our work, to be able yeah, to, bring, to build bridge between different disciplines, different fields, um, and potentially also to reconsider, or at least to position the projects as a way to uh, converse between non-human agent and human agent. Um, this is the subject uh, we will try to explore this year uh, and the following years uh, in uh, EPFL Lausanne, Switzerland, so as an academic uh, research, but also here with the student in UCL um, Tournai, is potentially how can we engage other fields and how can we engage that kind of objects um, that are clearly dedicated to um, natural source of energy. I guess the, the question would be, would it be possible to understand these kind of very efficient buildings uh, in their kind of a special quality, knowing that the, they have a very punctual somehow implantation, very punctual uh, impact, but they also, so, sorry, they also um, uh, address uh, bigger uh, territories somehow. And what we want also to do uh, is, as we used to do as architects, is to build a new representation. Uh, we believe that representation and new narratives could bring other knowledge, and uh, this is perhaps an example of that kind of representation, which is actually a model of the gravity force uh, on Earth. Thank you very much.